Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, NVIDIA's GT730 $50 graphics card. Who should buy this? Who should not buy it? That's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I have previously reviewed this card's little brother, the GT710, which you can see right here. The GT710 is about a $35 graphics card. Now, a link to that video will be in the video description below, along with several game performance videos on that card to show you what you get with a $35 graphics card. Coming up after this video will be game performance videos on the GT730 so you can compare how well this performs compared to the 710. And then also you can see on my channel other videos I've done with more powerful cards just to see what the relative performance is. Yes, there are two cards over here and another computer and I'll talk about those in a minute. But for now we're focused on the entry level $35 and $50 cards. The computer in front of me is the computer that both of these cards are installed in. This is an Intel i5-2400 based machine. I have previously done a video on the deal that is the i5-2400s and a link to that video will be in the video description below. Why is that a deal? Because this is an i5 true quad core machine. It's not brand new, but you can buy these on eBay now for less than $150, including Windows and a hard drive and RAM and everything. And for a budget entry level system, that's a lot of value for the money. Now this is a slim tower and these are low profile cards and they both fit into a slim tower such as this. More powerful graphics cards require a full mini tower case which is what you see over there. So when you watch the game performance videos of these two cards, they were both installed in this actual machine which has 8 gigabytes of system RAM along with an i5-2400 CPU. Let me talk about two categories of games for a minute. There are casual eSports titles, and then there are AAA big budget titles. If you want to play League of Legends, Rocket League, Dota 2, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Minecraft, these cards are the only thing you need to consider. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars to play those sorts of games. As far as what performance to expect, since I've already filmed the game performance videos, I can tell you this. League of Legends, 1080p resolution, medium detail, 60 frames per second on the GT710. At very high detail, you need the 730 to get 60 frames per second. The GT710 only runs at 30 frames per second at very high detail. So that's what you get for your extra $15 is more performance. You can turn the detail sliders up higher or get a faster frame rate, your choice. Now, I have tested Rocket League, League of Legends, etc. on both of these cards. After this video will be game performance videos posted on the GT730, and there will be a full playlist to those videos in the video description below. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please do so by clicking the subscribe button below this video, and you will get notifications as the game performance videos post on the GT730. So that's casual or esports titles. If, on the other hand, you want to play AAA or big budget titles, such as Battlefield 1, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Grand Theft Auto 5, Doom, Hitman, those will not play on these cards. Yes, I have tested Grand Theft Auto 5, which is not a new game. It's been out for about a year and a half now. I will post the game performance video on it. It's not pretty. You really need more performance to play a game such as that. I'm not even going to try with Battlefield 1. It would be pointless. Now that is what those cards and that computer are sitting there for. What I have on that side of the table is the step up from the 730. Just to put this into perspective, this is about a $50 graphics card. Those are $100 graphics cards. What I have over there are the two $100 cards I'd recommend if you want more performance. AMD's excellent RX 460 and Nvidia's GTX 1050. Both of those cards have two gigabytes of VRAM on them, two gigabytes of video RAM, and both are about $100. Neither card will fit into one of these slim machines. They both require a standard case such as this. If you watch my deal video on the i5-2400, I talk about the case size, and if you want to add a video card, you need to make sure to buy a machine that is in a case that looks like this and not like this. Now, what do you get for the extra money? I talked about performance between the, the GT710 and 730. How does the 730 compare to the RX 460 or GTX 1050? Overwatch is a great example. Very popular game, very nice. It will run 
on the GT730. I have filmed a game performance video which will be coming up soon on my channel on this card. Now in order to play Overwatch on this $50 card, you have to turn the detail way down. Low detail preset, 1080p resolution, 50% render resolution, which means the game is displaying at 1080p, but is internally rendering at 720p. It's playable. It is absolutely playable. It's just not very pretty. The difference is if you spend $50 more on an RX 460 or a GTX 1050, you can turn the detail up to ultra and the render resolution to 100% and it plays at 60 plus frames per second just fine. So there is a very large performance difference between a GT730 and either the RX 460 or GTX 1050. I would say this, if you want to play games and you have a case that looks like this and at least a 250 watt power supply, I would definitely recommend that you spend the $100 on the RX 460 or the GTX 1050. What is the GT730 really for? A couple of things. First, if you really are only going to play League of Legends and Rocket League, you don't need to spend $100. This plays League of Legends perfectly at 1080p at over 60 frames per second at max detail. You don't really gain anything with the more expensive cards. So if that's the only game you're going to play, this is all you need. Second, it fits into these slim style systems. If you already own a slim tower such as this, those cards won't fit in here, so it's completely a moot point. You either have to replace the computer or be happy enough with the GT730. So that is some of the gaming uses of these cards. What about non-gaming? Well, if you watched my original GT710 video, I talked about one of the values of, of these cards is that if you simply need to add video ports to your computer, they represent great value for the money. In fact, this machine in front of me does not have an HDMI port on the back. If you want an HDMI port, you have to add a video card. For just running Windows, browsing the web, uh, watching videos, social media, anything you would do that's non-gaming, there is zero performance difference between these two cards. You don't have to spend the $50, just spend the $35, it runs just fine. For just connecting to a television or a modern monitor, if you want to add um, a DVI port or an HDMI port to an older machine, or perhaps you have an older video card that's failed and you simply need any video card to provide you with a video out port, the GT710 is all you need. There's no need to buy a 730 if you don't plan to play games. One more thought on the GT730. This card comes in a one gigabyte, two gigabyte, and even a four gigabyte version. One question people may ask is, is it worth buying the versions with larger uh, memory? And the answer is no, it is not. Unless they, for whatever reason, cost less. Now, I will link in the video description below to the full list of GT730 cards at both Amazon and Newegg. And if by chance the two gigabyte card happens to cost less than the one gig, then by all means buy the two gig card. However, for the performance this offers, there is zero benefit to buying the two gig card. Don't pay any more for it. And the four gigabyte card is completely pointless. Don't, don't buy the four gigabyte card. When I did the game performance videos on this, Overwatch, Rocket League, League of Legends, none of them used more than one gigabyte of VRAM. So there is absolutely no reason to buy the two gigabyte version of this card unless you just happen to find a good deal on one. There is one further benefit of this card over and above the more expensive cards. Noise. It makes none. Let me show you. And here we have the card. This is the Zotac GT730 one gigabyte card. There is no fan on it. This is completely passively cooled with a heatsink. The benefit is if you want a silent system for say a home theater PC and you don't want there to be any fans running, no noise whatsoever. You can see it's a low profile card. Now, the bracket here is full height. They do include the low profile brackets in the box. So, this comes off with a single screw right here and you can replace this with a low profile bracket. The VGA connector on the end will then come down to a separate bracket. There's two low profile brackets provided in the box. 
or you can simply disconnect the ribbon cable and take the VGA connector off completely if you simply aren't interested in using it. So this will fit into a single slot if needed, if you don't care about the VGA port, or it'll use two slots in a low profile, such as this machine, if you want to keep all three video ports. You certainly have the option and can do it either way. So that has been the NVIDIA GT730 graphics card. It fits a small part of the market in between the basic GT710 and the higher end GTX 1050 and AMD RX 460. Most people should actually buy one of those cards, not this, but there are some people who should buy this. If I were going to play League of Legends at 1080p, I would absolutely spend the extra $15 to buy it because you do in fact turn the detail up two full notches for the same frame rate. However, that's a fairly, fairly narrow application. The GT730 will play League of Legends, but in terms of performance for the dollar, the RX 460 and the GTX 1050 are actually better value for the money because they are double the price, 100 versus 50, of the GT730, but they're more than triple the performance. So you are getting a better value for your dollar with those cards. But if you simply need a basic gaming card for League of Legends, Dota 2, Rocket League, and you have a slim style case, the GT730 will in fact run just fine. Again, link to the full playlist of videos on this card in the video description below, as well as links to both Amazon and Newegg for all the items that I've mentioned here, and a link to eBay for the i5 2400 based computer deal and the video that I did on it, because frankly, that is a deal in and of itself. Like this video if you like it. Don't if you don't remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button right down there. Questions and comments go in the comment section below and check out the video description for all the links that I mentioned. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.